Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. So today it's only me without my sister because I will be answering some pre-med questions and MCAT related questions that you guys asked me on my Instagram. I'm so excited to be doing this because y'all asked me these questions like about like two months ago and I completely forgot about them because I was staying for the MCAT. So now that I'm done with that, I will be answering all y'all's questions and yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so before I start and if you're new here, welcome. I just wanted to introduce myself. So my name is Tasmia, I'm a junior. My major is human development and family studies and my minor is biology, but I'm on the pre-med track. So a lot of people don't know that my minor is biology because people think my major is biology, but I was once a biology major and I just felt like I couldn't do that because it was a lot and like a lot of extra classes you have to take outside of pre-med. So I decided to major in something easier, but also something that interests me more. And that's why I went with human development and family studies. Okay, let's get into all the questions you guys asked me on Instagram. The first question is, what is your favorite subject? I literally love this question because as a pre-med student, you might think it's science, but in reality, my favorite subject is actually math. Anything that has to do with math, I love math so much. Like I literally would do math all day, every day if it were up to me. But I also do like chemistry. Like my favorite pre-med like course in college was literally chemistry. I would do anything to take chemistry again. I would do anything to teach chemistry. I've actually tutored in chemistry. So I love chemistry. So for any of y'all's chem questions, come to me. <laughs> One of these questions asked me high school or college. That is such a good question because sometimes people are like college is so much better than high school. And sometimes people are like high school is so much better than college. I think it just depends on your experience. I don't know how to explain it, but high school was just so much more fun. And like the fact that you were forced to go to classes, forced to make friends, forced to talk to people, like I kind of like that idea because in college you're given so much freedom that you have to like go out of your way to like talk to people and make friends and hang out with your friends. And I feel like it's so much harder to do that, especially as a commuter because I'm not living like on campus, so I have to like go extra out of my way to be like, okay, let's hang out today. Or okay, let me like stay on campus for a little bit longer so I can hang out with you. Or it's like, okay, I'm gonna go home so I can beat traffic, so I'm not gonna be coming to that event. So I feel like in college, it's so much harder to make friends and it's just so much harder to like manage your time and manage your schedule because you're the one that made that schedule. And if you don't like it, it's on you and you can't blame your counselor versus like in high school. You can just be like, yeah, I don't like my counselor for making my schedule. She didn't do a good job. I would literally go back to high school only because I like the fact that you're like forced to do stuff because then that keeps you going. And in college, I have a little too much freedom. So sometimes I lose myself. But that's just an unpopular opinion that a lot of y'all might not agree with me on. Okay, this question I get a lot. So it is any advice on organic chemistry? I'm struggling. I get this question so much because I posted so much about orgo on my TikTok that a lot of people are like very like interested on getting tips and advice on how to pass it. And honestly, I really liked orgo. Like I know a lot of people won't say this, they're like, Orgo is the hardest subject in college. No, I don't think that's the hardest subject. I think there's harder subjects out there. I think Orgo is fun if you make it fun. It's like a puzzle, so I feel like once you get it, then you get it, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are like, if you don't like chemistry, you'll like Orgo, and if you don't like Orgo, you'll like chemistry. It's like the opposite. But for me, I actually surprisingly liked Orgo and I like chemistry, which is like so surprising because chemistry has to do with like numbers and math and Orgo has to do with like puzzles and shape and no math. So I was surprised myself. I surprisingly did good on both of them, like chem and Orgo. I made the same grade, which is so surprising. But I was so proud of myself towards the end because I knew all the hard work paid off. But I posted some tips on my TikTok to like for good advice and how to get an A in organic chemistry. But a rundown of those tips would be, I would say practice, like literally keep practicing until you know how to do it with your eyes closed. Like that's how much I practice. I practice after my lectures, I practice before my lectures, I practice before exams. Like you cannot fall behind. That's my number one tip too, because the minute you fall behind is the minute all that stress gets to you and you're like, where do I start? And you can't do that. I was in a workshop for organic chemistry. So after that, they gave us worksheets. And every day I would go home and I would do those worksheets. And then I would look at the answer key and I would make sure I was doing it right. 
that way like i didn't fall behind and i was staying on top of it and because organic chemistry like builds on itself like from one lesson the next lesson she would teach us on thursday had to do a tuesday's lesson so if you didn't get tuesday's lesson you're not going to get thursday's lesson that means you just keep falling behind so it was very important to stay on top of it for me and also another tip would be to just not study a week before the exam like or even like two days no no, no. you have to study at least two weeks before the exam because you have to know what you're doing like i literally saw an improvement in my grade when i started studying at least two weeks before the exam i'm like the exam's coming up okay i gotta start studying but yeah you have to put a lot of work into it i know it's like a lot like sometimes it can get like why is there so many reactions but if you're like bad at memorizing like me you can make flashcards flashcards really help me and anki is also a very good like helpful device to use okay i say all these questions are good but this is a very good question that is really interesting to me so it says what is something you change in your life or pre-med journey this is such a good question that i have to actually think about and honestly for me sometimes unfortunately it would be telling people that i'm a pre-med student i know like this is shocking like saying this as i'm talking to a youtube video and as i'm a tiktoker and my whole life is me talking about how i'm a pre-med student but sometimes I feel like when my whole life is out there and also my career path is out there, it can like become very pressurizing. And whenever you don't want to do it, like people look down on that. And that's what's very hard because I'm not going to lie, like I question this sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, is pre-med really right for me? Am I really smart for this? Can I do it? Am I capable? And um, you can't really have those thoughts. I mean, you could have those thoughts, but... The fact that I already told everyone like I'm a pre-med student, it's very hard to back down from it even if I chose to be like, I don't want to do it anymore. It's like a win-lose situation. Like there's good things about it and then there's also bad things about telling people because it keeps you accountable but also keeping you accountable too much can be a little like scary on my end. So I don't know. That's just one thing maybe I should have kept private but also that's also the one thing that made my tiktok like blow up and the reason that i actually have people watching my youtube video right now so i don't know <laughs> okay, this question is like a build up from the previous question so it's how did you build your followers so um actually i started posting tiktoks in quarantine when i realized that i'm just so bored and i don't know what to do so i was like okay let's just start posting tiktoks and then i go to college and i'm in like my first lecture of the day of my whole life and I'm like, I had no idea a lecture looked like this. Like, I was genuinely so surprised from going to a high school class that's like only like 20 people to going to a whole lecture that's literally 500 people in an auditorium. And I was like, whoa, like, I never saw this whenever I was a kid and whenever I was in high school. So I would love to show it to other people. So that's what I did. So I made a day in the life that was actually like my first like college video. And I posted it and it actually got views and it was probably like the worst like quality and worst editing i've ever done from all of these but those were the ones that got viral and i'm surprised because now i edit so much and they get like two views so yeah my tiktok career started from day in the lives and i wouldn't want it any other way because that's how i wanted to show people of what a college experience is really like like as a commuter because a lot of people were like wow i'm a commuter too and some people were like nah i live on the dorm so it was like very like interesting to see like two sides of the world you know okay, this question is also about like tiktok and youtube so it's what made you want to start making videos of school so it's honestly that and also like i just wanted to like hold myself accountable so that's why i also told people i was a pre-med student and i also thought i could be motivating to other students that were pursuing pre-med because you can feel alone a lot of the times in this pre-med journey or you can also feel like you're competing with others in this pre-med journey and it can be very difficult to navigate, especially if you're like a first gen like me and like you don't know where to start and you don't know where to go. And it's like there's no like book like telling you what to do and exactly how many hours you need and where to shadow and how many hours of shadowing you need. And like they tell you the prereqs, but they don't actually tell you like everything. And I thought it would be really cool to just like portray it on my TikTok and just show other people what I'm doing to get to medical school and just help them out and that's what tiktok is i think i think like 
everyone tries to help each other out and that's what i love about tiktok this is my most common asked question whenever i posted this poll it's how do you balance school with life and honestly this is another good question because i get this question so much even on tiktok and there's like no right answer to it because sometimes i feel like i can't balance life either so i'm surprised to even see that you guys think i know how to balance my life because honestly i have no idea like jk that's not the right answer guys i would say that you need to have your priorities straight like you genuinely need to know what comes first and for me, that always has been my career or school, whether whatever that career or school is. It's always been that since high school, since middle school, and now till college. It's always been career first, and then my family, and then friends. So since I always prioritized my career, I always made sure to like now go out to that party. If I have like a test coming up, I'm going to go study for my test, and I'm going to prioritize school. And then if I have a family event, then I'm going to prioritize my family event over my friends. So I think you really need to know where your priorities are. And then from there, everything just like lays down in itself. Someone said your life looks so aesthetic. Like, that's so sweet. I would think otherwise. It's literally a mess. Like, look at this. But if you think so, you know, I'm joking. Thank you so much for thinking that because that just made my day. It's another question, kind of like the last one. So it's, how do you manage all your work and assignments? And honestly, I would say it has to do with that priorities thing too. Because you need to know where your priorities lie. And also, I make a Google Calendar so I can tell, like, what assignments I have due that week. And that really helps me just, like, whenever you cross it off, you're like, wow, I did that all in one day. Like, it just feels so good. So either keeping track of your assignments in a planner, a calendar, really feels good when you cross it off. So I think that keeps me going. But this question, so many people have been wanting to know the answer to. And I've honestly avoided it my whole, like, TikTok, like, every time someone tries to ask me, because I just wanted to keep this aspect of my life private because I know I post everything out there and I just I like believe in like Nazar which is like evil eye and I didn't want that coming on me so I was like I'm gonna keep this a little bit private but the question is when are you taking the MCAT? so now that I've actually done the MCAT I can finally talk about this question which is like so surprising that I can finally talk about it with a smile on my face but I actually took the MCAT on April 13, 2024 which is actually a week ago so that feels like insane to even say out loud like wow i took the mcat that's crazy but yeah it was it was an exam guys that seven hours felt like the longest seven hours of my life but when i did wake up early in the morning i was never excited for a test except for this mcat because i was so ready to go get it done and i was so confident going into it but then coming out of it i was just like so demotivated i was like I think I got the lowest of low scores, but I guess we'll find out when scores come out in like a month. And I don't know, but that's going to be the scariest day of my life. Like taking the MCAT was the most exciting day of my life because I knew that I would have peace after it. Like right now, like I'm just chilling. But I know that when scores come out, like life is just going to get even more real. And it's like, I'm going to have to decide if I'm going to take the MCAT again or what am I going to do and what are my next steps. So I guess we'll find out and I'll keep you guys updated. And if you guys have any more questions about the MCAT, how I studied for it, what I did, just um, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them in a different video because I want to do a separate video about like the MCAT and all y'all's questions. This next question I think is just so interesting because no one has ever asked me this before. And I've got asked like a lot of questions in my life, but I love this question. It's what's one thing you wish someone told you when you were beginning this journey i wish someone told me to just like enjoy the little moments in it too you know like if you get like an anki card deck one day and you should just like be proud of that because at least you accomplished one thing and also trust the process because you never know what could happen and sometimes it's like right now like i feel like i did really bad on the mcat but you never know until your scores come out so just have trust in yourself and enjoy the little moments because they actually matter and those things you'll remember and they'll make you happy. I wish I like took my little accomplishments like I actually took a second to take them in because I know life just moves so fast sometimes and you don't even take a second to just enjoy your accomplishments and just be proud of how far you've come because I generally don't do that like I'm literally a junior and I've taken the MCAT and I should be so proud of myself that 
I even studied for the MCAT while being in school because that's genuinely the hardest thing I have ever done. But the fact that I even took it and I went to that exam and I felt confident and I stayed there for seven hours, like I should be proud of myself. I did that. And that's one step into my journey. So I am genuinely proud of myself and I'm glad I did it. Y'all got some good questions. This is another good question. It's what classes did you take in high school that helped you out in college? I think this is such a good question because sometimes when you're in high school, you don't really think about college until like junior year and you're like, okay, shit, this is getting real. Maybe I should have taken some classes to prepare me. So as a pre-med student, I took AP chemistry in high school and I think that was the reason I did so good in chemistry. And I also think that's a good reason why I didn't think chemistry in college was hard at all. Like in my university, they say chemistry is the hardest subject. Like I think chem and orgo is the hardest pre-med subjects in um, my college. But the fact that I took chemistry in high school, it like really helped me like ace chemistry without any worries. And I was like, I got this. Like I remembered everything. And also another class I would say is to take AP bio because I didn't do so good in biology in college. And I think I would have done better if I took AP Bio because that would have prepared me just like AP Chem did. I would say like take like any AP classes that you have offered that are like science related and that are some prereqs for like pre-med classes that you have to take in college and also take any dual credit. I don't know if that's offered in like every state, but dual credit means that if you just take the class, you don't have to take an AP test at the end, but you basically get the credit if you pass the class. So yeah, really research into dual credit and AP classes if you are in high school right now. This is also another question I get a lot. It's what college do you go to? A lot of people have been wanting to know this question. And honestly, this is another thing that I just wanted to keep private since it is on my TikTok and some people could recognize the college I go to. I guess I'll just say it. So I go to University of Houston. Um, I think it's a great school. It's like a mainly commuter school. So there's some people that dorm, but not so many people that dorm. I'm also one of the commuters and the parking there is insane. So don't come to U of, no, I'm joking, come to U of H guys. Okay, this is the last question. It's how did you build your followers on TikTok? Um, honestly, I have no idea. Like, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. I just posted and I just got followers cause I guess I was interesting, I don't know. But yeah, I just keep posting guys and one day you'll be there. <laughs> that is all the questions i will be answering for you guys today if you guys want like another sit down video like this about any other topics or any other questions you guys have maybe about the mcat how i studied for the mcat or me applying to med school when i'm applying to med school if i'm applying to med school just leave them in the comments down below and i'll make sure to like do another video about them but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this q a i hope you guys enjoyed and learned something and yeah until next time bye guys